Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining me for this Experts on Tap session. Today, I'll be introducing you to Software Asset Manager, which I'll often be referring to as SAM for short. My name is Dylan Pereira. I'm a client success advocate here in the Carolinas, and my role is to help our clients get the most value possible from their existing investments. I think SAM is a great tool to meet that mission, and I'd like to show off what it can do for you. So let's first off talk about what is the problem. Well, in your facilities, you likely have a number of computers, not just one or two. Uh, you might have a few dozen. If you have multiple facilities that you're managing, you may even have a few hundred. So how do you manage those as far as keeping track of what's on each machine? So for example, with InTouch, if a new patch comes out, how do you know which computers you've gone out into the field and installed it on uh, when you do have to manage this many computers? What SAM gives us is an automated tool to help audit those machines so that we know what is actually on each of them, be it the version of Wonderware software, uh, Windows, et cetera. And so the way it works is when we first start up Software Asset Manager, uh, it will connect to the Aviva support site. And when it does that, it'll download two major things. The first is a list of all of the current versions of software, as well as any patches that are available. And the second is for your account, it'll download any licenses that are available uh, for your site. And the big thing to keep in mind here is it is downloading that data, but it's a one-way data push. Um, Software Asset Manager is not intended to be a big brother type of system. We're retrieving data from the site for you to use for your own audit purposes. But at the end of the day, none of this data is sent back to Aviva or Wonderware. So once we've pulled down that data, Software Asset Manager allows us to then connect, ideally to computers out in the field that are on your network, because it makes it really easy to do that. And I'll show you that in just a few minutes. Uh, but also for any computers that are stranded, not on your network, you also have the option of using a USB stick to go over to that machine, uh, run a quick little program, which collects data about what's installed on it, and then you can bring it back to the main software asset mesh manager machine uh, and add that data into your inventory. So the big thing here is it'll go out on the network, find your computers, uh, collect the information about what's on them, and let you manage all that information from one central place. And you may be saying, well, why do I need another third party tool? The nice thing about Aviva's uh, tool here is that it is built purposely for looking at Aviva software. So things like Wonderware's InTouch products, application server, et cetera. So a lot of third party tools will not have the understanding of Wonderware software to be able to pull in the same type of information. And so when we talk about SAM, it does a few major things. The first one is to detect the machines that are out there. Uh, like I said, we'll see that in just a second as to how it can make it really easy for you to do this. The second thing is to go and assess what's actually on them. So not only find that they're on the network, but let's see what software is actually on them that we might need to upgrade. As well, let's see not just the version, but what versions are currently available. If there are newer versions, we can do an acquire step, which is basically downloading the latest patches. And the deploy step allows us to then push those patches over the network to our remote machines. Big caveat here is it allows us to send the installer over the network, but it does not run the installer. You would still have to go out into the field or remote into that computer to run the installer. Uh, lastly, we can report on all of this information. So if we want to see uh, what computers are running what software, et cetera. We have a nice little interface to see all of that information and even export it to something like Excel. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into a demo so that you can see what this actually looks like. All right, so on my screen, you can see Software Asset Manager. And when you first open up, this is what it's gonna look like. Uh, you'll have the option here to either log in to the Aviva support site using your credentials that you would use for the normal website. Or if you're gonna be running this on a computer that's not connected to the internet, you do have the option to download a metadata file that has, again, the versions of software uh, as well as your license information. You can download that ahead of time from the support site and then just uh, browse to it from here. 
which will give Software Asset Manager all the information it needs. Now, I've already logged in, so I'm just going to click back to get to our main screen. And the first thing we need to do here is create a listing of the computers that we're interested in. And like I said, uh, Software Asset Manager makes this kind of easy for us. The first thing uh, to remember when using the software is in these menus, always go from left to right. So we're going to start at the Create phase, move our way down to the Reports. And within the individual options on each menu, again, we're going to start at the left, move to the right, and I'll keep you going in the right direction here. So to start, we need to add in a system. I've already done that here. A system is basically just a grouping. So for your plant, that might be one giant group of all of your computers, but you might want to group them out by different areas of the plant. If you're looking at multiple buildings, you might have a group per building, etc. Here you can see I have one just called Dylan's Test Machines. So starting at the left here, I'm going to move over to Discover Machines. And what this is going to do is look on the network for any of my machines and add them into the list automatically. So what I need to provide first is a username and password that is going to be common to all the machines that I'm looking at. One of the nice things about uh, the Wonderware world of software and Aviva tools is when we're using things like InTouch, you would have set up a network account user that's common across all of our PCs. So here I'm just leveraging the fact that I know it's the same account on all of my computers, uh, and I've entered in that username and password. The second thing to do is enter in the IP range that we want to scan. So I'm going to type in the range that my machines are in. Oops. Hundred two. All right, so I've entered in the range that I know I have computers in. I'll click Next. And then the big thing to do is click this little Start button. So it'll actually start scanning. And once this starts, we'll see on the bottom here the progress. It's going to go from uh, .200 to .225, which is what I asked, so 26 IP addresses. Uh, and within you know, probably less than a minute for the range that I've looked at here, we should see a couple of computers pop up on my screen above. All right, it's almost completed here. There we go. So I can see four computers that are detected in that IP range. Uh, one of them, you can see here, no applicable products. That's actually this computer that I'm on. You can see it's named uh, WWSAM. Uh, That's the computer I'm running Software Asset Manager on. The other three, though, this one has System Platform 2020 on it, uh, System Platform 2020 R2, uh, System Platform 2014 R2. So you can see I'm running a number of different machines for testing, um, but Software Asset Manager is able to see all of them. And it does note that there are software products available on it that it's seen from Aviva. So what I'm going to do is just select those three computers that I'm interested in, and I'm going to drag them over to my group. All right, so they've added into my list. I'll click Finish here. And then the next thing to do, it's a little bit redundant, but again, moving from left to right, I'm going to do a connectivity check. Now, in this case, we know it's going to connect since we just added them to our list. But you can imagine I might be coming into this tool a month later, two months later, to re-audit my systems. And so we just need to do a check of connectivity before we'll be able to do any of the other steps. Okay, So it does see all of these with 100% uh, good status with connecting to them. So I'm going to move over to the detect phase. And again, we're going to move from left to right. In this case, I could select an individual machine. Or if I'm selecting the group at the top, I can just click Start. And while that's scanning, I'll also mention that if I did have additional machines that I didn't detect on the network, um, maybe because I didn't want to scan the range, I could right click on this grouping here uh, and manually add in a machine as well. Right. So add that in by IP address or computer name. Uh, you would have to enter in, again, the username and password that we could use to connect to it. But this would allow you to enter them in manually if you knew the list of computers. Definitely, though, using the discovery option is a much easier solution in my mind. So it's going to take a second here to connect to those remote PCs. 
and pull in the list of software that's running on each. Again, in this case, this is in an Aviva uh, specific tool. So we're not gonna see things like Microsoft Office, uh, Google Chrome, et cetera. You, know, you would see those if you went into control panel and looked at the programs that are installed, but this is only gonna report back on the Aviva tool set that we have on each machine. So things like InTouch, application server, historian, et cetera. Now, a big thing to keep in mind here, I say it's gonna detect InTouch. When it comes back, we're gonna see not only InTouch, but we're gonna see you know, Window Maker, Window Viewer, uh, the Alarm DB Logger, the Alarm Printer, any language packs that we've installed. It's gonna find all of the subcomponents that are parts of the Aviva tools. So it can be a lot of information, but once we pull this in, I'll show you how to do some filtering as well to make it easier to uh, actually utilize the data that we get. All right, so now we can see it is pulled in the information and it's just processing it to make it able for us to display it. And like I said, we have a lot of information here as to the tools that are installed. Um, not all of this information is gonna be truly useful to you because a lot of it's the subcomponents. But you know, a quick way for me to look at this is um, as far as what I would find sort of useful information, um, I can come into here and filter this information. So the current life cycle is probably an important thing. So is the various tools that we found on the machine, are they still under support? So I'm gonna grab that and just drag it up. Do that one more time. There we go. Took a second there, but we dragged it up and now it's grouped everything by where it is in the life cycle. The second thing I'm gonna do though is also grab the machine name, just to again, make it a little easier to sort this information. So now if we say mature support uh, for any of our computers, we can look here and see what tools are listed under mature support. Okay, so here, uh, this is my 2014 R2 computer, you know, things like our historian, uh, InTouch, et cetera, will be on this list. Um, they are older versions of software. So understandably, uh, they're under mature support now. Um, on this screen though, we can see that's the installed products. You can also see what patches or service packs have been installed, um, the licenses that have been installed. And so I'll, for a tangent real quick here, installed licenses are gonna be the older style uh, LIC files. So if you're using version 2014 R2 or older, and the activated licenses are gonna be the ones that come by XML file uh, that you're using with versions 2017 and higher, okay? So installed licenses are the LIC files, activated licenses are the XML files, okay? So we've gone ahead and detected that information. The next thing I wanna do is come into the assess step. So detect just grabbed all the information in general. Assess is gonna do a comparison to see of the tools that we have, are there patches available on the Wonderware site that we could download? And so I can see here again for 2014 R2, my InTouch, it's uh, seen the version that I have and saying, hey, there is actually a version 17, the 2017 version that's available. That's a full version upgrade, which maybe I don't wanna do at this moment. Um, the historian on one of my machines here, the 2020 machine, you can see I have version 2020 installed uh, there is a service pack, a 20.1 version. Uh, so again, from here, I not only know what versions are available, but I can also come into the next step here of acquire to download the patches. And then with deploy, actually send those out over the network to those remote machines. Now I'll say uh, using the acquire and deploy steps in here uh, can definitely be helpful. I am, uh, the type of person who likes to do things kind of manually, um, but this will save you some time having it send it over the network for you automatically. Again, it, when you do that deploy, it is not gonna actually run the installer. It's just gonna send it over the network, okay? 
So with that said though, let's jump over to reports so we can see again, some more of the data that's available to us by using Software Asset Manager. So starting from the beginning, I'll hit product inventory here. And this is gonna show us the information really that we saw on that detect screen. Um, really all of the various tools uh, that were available to us. And so from here, we can use the little filter icons uh, or sort by the column headers to make it easier to view this information. Um, but we have some other really cool tools in here that we've not seen in the other tabs. The first one is this legacy license section. This can be really, really useful if you're, again, on 2014 R2 or older versions of software where you're using the LIC license files. You know, if you have maybe 50 in-touch licenses, a lot of times it be, can become really easy to, instead of trying to uh, remember where various serial numbers are installed, to just use that same serial number over and over again on multiple machines. Technically, that's a no-no. Again, though, this is not a big brother piece of software. This is not getting sent to us or to Aviva, anything like that. Um, but through these tools here, you can not only look up what licenses are installed on the remote machines, um, it'll also run reports to see if there's any duplicate serial numbers. So if you are running the same serial number on multiple computers. Uh, there's also a license variance. So again, maybe you own 50 licenses uh, and you scan it and you're actually only using 45 of them. You can see if you're uh, not using all of your licenses and maybe that'll benefit you at the end of the year to maybe drop those off of support. Uh, it'll also show you the opposite though. So if you own 50 licenses and you're using it on 60 computers, this would let you know um, so you can get that sorted out. Uh, the license activation section is again, uh, similar to the legacy license section, but it's for our 2017 to now 2020 R2 versions when we're using the license server. This will go out on the network of the machines that we're looking at, see where licenses are installed uh, to make it easier to track. Again, when you're using the license server, this is maybe a little less helpful, but you can run the license server on multiple computers. So this does make it, um, a little bit easier for you to audit those machines. One really nice tool that I like in here is the ability to look at Microsoft security patches. So you're probably familiar that the Aviva support site has Security Central. That lets you see the uh, patches that Wonderware has released, or I'm sorry, the patches that Microsoft has released and whether or not they're supported by Wonderware. Um, if I come into here, I can not only scan the installed patches on each machine, which is what I just ran. I probably didn't want to do that one, um, but we'll let it finish here. Um, the other report that's in this list though, is to look at the Microsoft gap. So of the patches that are installed, uh, Wonderware has approved other patches. Which of those approved ones have you not installed yet? Uh, now these are my test machines. We'll see how long this takes to run, but I've not, Put many patches on them at all. So uh, this might be a long list here, but it makes it really easy for you to see uh, where that variance is between the patches that are installed and the patches that maybe you should have. Now I will say one feature request I would love to see in this is that once it gives you that list of Microsoft patches, it does not give you a link to download the patch. So you do have to manually go out to the Microsoft site and download uh, the various KB patches. Um, but again, it makes it a little easier for you, especially since it's doing it over the network for multiple computers, um, so you can look at them at once. Okay. Um, the last couple options here for auditing, again, uh, this is a little bit of overlap with the other screens, but it'll let you see uh, where your licenses are in use, how many licenses, et cetera. And then the miscellaneous section is again, just where uh, or what products are installed on different computers the hot fixes that are installed. Um, keep in mind the hot fix report here requires you to have used one of the newer hot fixes that comes with an installer. If you manually installed a hot fix uh, back in the day where you were uh, manually placing files in different folders, I don't believe it's gonna get reported here uh, in this report. Okay. But the big thing is with this information, it makes it really easy to see all of your information in one spot. Uh, as well as export that data then to something like Excel 
to make it easier for you in the future. So in the end, why should you try using Software Asset Manager or SAM as I've been calling it? Well, again, the big thing is you don't have to do manual audits. So no more walking out into the field with a clipboard or having to remote into multiple machines, realizing you forgot something and then having to remote into them again just saves you a lot of headaches, um, especially since it's reproducible. You can come back a month later and rerun those reports. Um, Software Asset Manager is built specifically for Aviva software. Again, if you were to use a third party tool, it's not gonna know what patches have been released from Wonderware. It's not gonna know what Microsoft patches are supported by Wonderware, et cetera. It's also gonna let you easily compare, again, the version that you have against what is the latest and also see the support level. So is something under mature support? Is it out of support altogether? Uh, this gives you a really quick way to track that. Um, for your licenses, you know, you want to make sure you're in compliance. So it does let you see uh, where your licenses are used, how many are in use. Again, it does not send any of this data back to Wonderware. Um, and another big thing, Software Asset Manager is free if you have a support agreement. This wasn't always the case. It used to be that only if you had a premium or elite support contract, you could get Software Asset Manager. It wasn't available to every user. But if you were to come to the Aviva support site now, you'll see here there's a SAM software icon on the homepage. If you click on that, it'll give you the links to download the software. It'll give you a quick video that gives you a tutorial. Uh, and there'll also be a link to download that metadata file. So if you didn't want to use Software Asset Manager on a computer that's on the internet, you could download that metadata file, um, import that at the very first step of using Software Asset Manager, and it would then allow you to run all of these reports and use the tools without having a internet connection. Again, having a network connection to all your machines is definitely going to make things easier, though, uh, as opposed to having to use a USB stick and walk out into the field. That said, again, thank you very much for joining me for this Experts on Taps session. My name is Dylan Pereira. If you have any questions, please give us a call here at InSource. We would love to hear from you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.